Since the dawn of time, there existed beings of incomprehensible power, the Absolute, creators of countless universes in their eternal pursuit of infinity. Their strength knew no bounds, and their thirst for knowledge was insatiable. These beings gave rise to everything, laws, souls, matter, and existence itself. But despite all their creations, the vastness of their power, and the endless possibilities of the cosmos, none of it could stave off their deep and persistent boredom. One absolute being, in particular, turned to a new form of entertainment. He began observing the creatures he had crafted, closely studying their endless struggles, battles, and the intricate web of schemes they spun. Each conflict, each skirmish, fascinated him. He sought answers within their chaos, answers to questions that had plagued him since the first universe was born. He marveled at the creature's capacity for destruction, the endless cycle of war, death, and rebirth. To him, this violent spectacle was more than just amusement, it was a glimpse into the mysteries of existence. But something unimaginable happened. During one of these wars, a creation, one of his own, struck down its creator. For the first time, an absolute had been killed by the very life he had shaped. When the news of this unprecedented event spread, other absolute beings from dimensions beyond reckoning turned their eyes toward the universe left without its master. The death of an absolute at the hands of his creation was a sign, an ill omen. It signaled the awakening of a hidden potential within those crafted beings, a power that had long been dormant. However, this revelation did not stir the other absolutes with concern. They had only one thought in mind, the power left behind by their fallen kin was now free for the taking and whoever claimed it first would wield unimaginable might. Meanwhile, in a world far removed from these cosmic events, a young boy named Suho received unexpected news. He had been accepted into the prestigious Korean National Institute of Arts. For Suho, it felt surreal, an achievement he never thought possible. His friends, upon hearing the news, were equally stunned. Their faces reflected disbelief, struggling to process what he was telling them. None of them could fully accept the truth, their expressions betraying a mixture of surprise and skepticism, as if they were grasping at the impossible. Suho's friends couldn't believe it. They all doubted that someone as rough around the edges as him could have passed the entrance exam to the Art Institute. One of them even broke down in frustration, insisting that Suho should have retaken the exam. But Suho, laughing along with them, shrugged it off. Well, I'm finally free from this hell, he joked, feeling a weight lift off his shoulders. Just then, a voice from behind interrupted the moment. So, you actually passed the exam? The voice said with a hint of mockery. Suho turned to see who it was. It was Kim Song Cole, or so he thought. The boy standing there was smirking, clearly intending to stir up trouble. Since when did you get good at drawing? Kim Song Cole sneered. But Suho's lightheartedness took a turn as the boy's expression soured. My name's not Kim Song Cole, it's Leon Call, he snapped, clearly agitated that Suho had messed up his name. However, Suho remained unfazed, pretending he hadn't mixed it up on purpose. He just grinned, playing it off. Whatever. Anyway, because of you, my plan to get into a good high school was ruined, Uncall continued, anger bubbling up. Suho, still calm, replied coolly, and thanks to you, I graduated. Their classmates began to notice the rising tension. They knew Uncall had a habit of provoking Suho, and it looked like this was going to be another one of those moments. Graduation was just around the corner, yet Uncall continued behaving immaturely, clinging to his grudges rather than embracing the responsibility and maturity expected of them at such a critical time. The other students couldn't understand why Uncall still harbored so much resentment toward Su Ho, especially after everything he'd gone through. Su Ho had endured the loss of his parents and was simply trying to find a path to happiness in his life. Why was Uncall picking a fight now? Unable to contain his anger any longer, Li Uncall's face twisted with rage as he shouted Su Ho's name and lunged at him, fist raised, ready to strike. But Su Ho didn't flinch. He remained completely calm, his body poised as if he had expected the attack all along. The moment Uncall made his move, Su Ho reacted with lightning speed, delivering a precise counterstrike on his face. Su Ho glanced down at him, his expression still composed. Stay quiet until graduation, he said firmly. But Uncall wasn't done. With a flash of defiance in his eyes, his resolve only growing stronger. Though he'd been struck on the face, he refused to give up. Li Uncall stood tall, a fierce glint in his eyes as he told Su Ho, that didn't hurt at all. His hand was enveloped in a strange, glowing energy that Su Ho had never seen before. It was an unfamiliar power, foreign and unsettling. The mysterious aura pulsed around Uncall as he unleashed a devastating punch, faster and stronger than anything Su Ho had ever encountered. It was only by sheer reflex that Su Ho managed to dodge the attack. Fear and shock were written across his face, and the other students stood frozen, 
just as stunned by the display of raw strength. Uncall's punch, brimming with energy, wasn't just powerful, it was terrifying. The force of it sent shockwaves through the room, shattering nearby iron lockers as if they were made of paper. Su Ho, lying on the floor in a daze, was completely paralyzed by what he'd just witnessed. Terror gripped him, rendering him unable to move as Uncall's entire body became shrouded in a brilliant, glowing aura. This energy radiated off of him with such intensity that it made him appear almost otherworldly, like a force capable of destroying anything in his path. The overwhelming power he exuded was something Su Ho had never thought possible. Two years passed since that fateful day. Su Ho, now a second-year university student, walked down the street deep in thought. That day still haunted him, replaying over and over in his mind. While he tried to focus on his studies, the memory of Uncall's terrifying power often crept into his thoughts, leaving a lasting impression on him. As he strolled through campus, Su Ho overheard a conversation between two men. One was telling the other that all classes in the main building had been moved to a neighboring facility. All students should head there, the man said. Suho assumed this was due to a gate sweep being conducted by hunters nearby. Glancing around, he noticed security personnel stationed everywhere, instructing people to avoid the danger zone. One of the guards asked, how long has it been since the hunters arrived? A staff member responded, just over an hour. Considering the gate is D-rank, they should be finishing up soon. An announcement rang through the area, stating that only authorized hunters could approach the gate. Suho sighed to himself, realizing that yet another gate had appeared. The increased security measures and restricted access served as a stark reminder of how much the world had changed in just three short years. Three years ago, strange, otherworldly gates began opening all across the globe, altering the course of humanity. These gates led to dangerous realms filled with monsters and mysteries, forcing the rise of hunters, individuals trained to combat the threats that emerged from within. Since then, Suho's life, like the rest of the world, had been shaped by this new reality, with no signs of things ever returning to normal. The world as they once knew it was gone, replaced by a reality shaped by the emergence of mysterious gates. These portals, like doorways to another dimension, opened into dungeons teeming with demonic beasts. If left unchecked, these creatures would spill out, wreaking havoc and destroying everything in their wake. But the changes didn't stop with the gates alone, humanity itself began to evolve. Some individuals developed the ability to wield magical energy, and these gifted ones were known as the Awakened. In this rapidly transforming world, the chaos that seemed destined to persist for years was brought under control sooner than anyone expected. An awakened man by the name of Wu Jinchil took the initiative, founding the Hunters Association. He united others like himself, creating an organization to manage the escalating crisis and formalizing the role of hunters. Society was now divided into two distinct groups, the awakened, who wielded supernatural power, and ordinary people, who couldn't awaken and had to live in the shadow of those who could. For ordinary people, life felt like an endless struggle, as if they were ants facing monumental challenges, while for the awakened, it seemed as though everything was handed to them on a silver platter. The gap between the two groups was undeniable, and those on the weaker side were acutely aware of their limitations. Suho understood this more than most. No matter how hard an ordinary person tried, they could never compete with even the lowest-ranked hunter. In fact, it was the hunters who stood as humanity's last line of defense. If they didn't close the gates, their world would be wiped out. This led Suho to a sobering realization, while the awakened were essential for survival, the ordinary people, like him, were not. Despite his gratitude toward the hunters for making it possible for unawakened people to live in peace, a lingering sense of anxiety gnawed at him. Could he ever accept the fact that he lacked the power he so desperately wanted? His unease stemmed from the feeling of being powerless, a vulnerability that had haunted him ever since his parents disappeared. It gnawed at him, filling the space left by his lost sense of security with helplessness. He often thought about his mother's words, how she would tell him he had taken after his father. Suho found himself wondering what his father would have done in his place. How would he have handled the loss, the dependency on others for survival, the sense of inadequacy? These questions weighed heavily on him. Just as he was lost in thought, a voice snapped him back to reality. His teacher had approached, breaking through his memories. You were really focused today, the teacher said with a smile. Suho blinked, still caught between the past and present, before nodding in acknowledgement. The teacher glanced at Suho's drawing, tilting his head with mild curiosity. Is it fun drawing like this? he asked. Suho, looking at his work, shrugged. I didn't really think about it. I just drew whatever came to mind. The teacher chuckled softly, then leaned in for a closer inspection. Your aunt is quite imaginative, he mused. But then his expression changed. Wait, it's not just an ant, is it? It's, a human ant. 
Suho stared at the sketch, confused. Why had he drawn such a strange image in the first place? The unsettling picture left him with an odd feeling, as though it carried a meaning he couldn't grasp. Meanwhile, outside near the gate, the staff were preparing to meet the returning hunters. The atmosphere was calm and relaxed, signaling that the raid had been a success. People gathered around the gate, exchanging relieved glances. One of the staff members approached a hunter and greeted him. Thank you for your hard work, Hunter Kim Jong-su, he said gratefully. Kim Jong-su nodded, wiping sweat from his brow. The dungeon's been cleared successfully. We'll need to report to the association right away. There's something new to report, he said, his voice tinged with unease. We encountered a new species of demonic beasts. They looked humanoid but had blue flames spewing from their eyes and mouths. They fought with claws and fangs, but they weren't very strong. Just low-level monsters. I got hurt a little, but it wasn't serious. No complications. The hunter paused, reflecting on the creatures. We've never seen anything like them before, but luckily they don't seem too dangerous, he added. The staff member nodded, suggesting that all the details be included in the official report. But before the conversation could continue, something alarming happened. Out of nowhere, blue flames ignited from the wound on Kim jong sus arm. He winced, feeling a sudden, sharp pain that seemed to spread throughout his body. His sword fell from his grip, his hands trembling as if seized by some invisible force. The staff member nearby noticed something strange, Kim jong sus eyes were glowing with the same eerie blue flames. Are you all right? The staff member called out, concern lacing his voice. But there was no answer. Kim jong su stood still, his head bowed, completely unresponsive. Then, without warning, the hunter turned and lunged at him. The flames had taken control, and Kim jong su now consumed by their power, was no longer himself. The staff member barely had time to react as the possessed hunter attacked, his actions driven by the mysterious blue fire that seemed to strip him of his will. The force that enveloped him was unlike anything they had faced before. The blue flames consumed the employee in an instant, leaving nothing but devastation in its wake. The hunters trailing behind Kim Jong-su were frozen in disbelief. Their leader, who had just cleared the dungeon alongside them, had now annihilated a man who posed no threat. It became painfully clear to them that the flames within this dungeon weren't ordinary. The fire had infected Kim Jong-su, turning him into a vessel of destruction, capable of spreading the affliction to anyone he bit. Panic erupted. The crowd near the gate realized the gravity of the situation and began to flee in terror, fearing that the infected hunter would turn on them next. People scrambled, searching desperately for shelter, trying to distance themselves from the chaos. Meanwhile, back in the classroom, the peaceful routine of the drawing lesson was abruptly shattered by the commotion outside. The noise grew louder, and the students rushed to the windows, curious and anxious to see what was causing such a disturbance. Suho glanced up from his drawing, confused by the rising shouts. Looking outside, the students were horrified. What they saw defied logic, people attacking each other in a frenzy, their bodies wreathed in blue flames. The flames had an eerie glow, and the people's eyes burned with the same unnatural light, filled with demonic energy. The students quickly deduced that the dungeon hadn't been fully cleared after all. Panic began to spread within the classroom as well. Outside, people were in chaos, some trying to find shelter, others shouting for help, calling for the hunters to save them. But fear was mounting. One student turned to Professor Talam, who was standing by the door, and urgently reminded him that he was an awakened too. You've got to do something, the student pleaded. But the professor shook his head, his expression grim. I'm only an Irank hunter, he said, helplessly. There's nothing I can do against that. At that moment, Suho's eyes widened as he noticed something alarming, a hunter, engulfed in blue flames, was barreling straight toward the building. Instinct kicked in, and he shouted, Get away from the windows. Now. His voice cut through the rising panic as the students scrambled to find safety. But it was too late. The hunter's flaming body crashed through the classroom window with a deafening smash. Glass shards flew everywhere, and the possessed hunter, lost to the blue flames, began attacking anyone in sight. The classroom descended into chaos as the hunter, no longer in control of his own body, unleashed devastation on everyone inside, Suho spun around and bolted toward the exit, yelling for the other students to follow his lead. As he sprinted down the hallway, his heart pounded in his chest. Amid the chaos, his eyes caught sight of a girl lying on the floor, writhing in pain. She was crying, her voice barely audible over the panic, pleading for someone to help her. Her legs were injured, leaving her unable to escape. Frozen for a moment, Suho didn't know what to do. His mind raced, how could he possibly save her? Fear gnawed at him, and without thinking, he turned away and continued running, shouting over his shoulder, I'll get help. I'll bring the hunters. The words tasted bitter as they left his mouth. 
He was running away, abandoning her to her fate. But as he fled, the weight of his actions pressed down on him. Guilt clawed at him, the thought of leaving the girl behind gnawing at his conscience. What good was he, an unawakened person, in a situation like this? He couldn't fight, couldn't save her. His powerlessness filled him with frustration. It's all because I'm not awakened, he thought bitterly. Yet, deep down, Suho knew that blaming his lack of abilities wouldn't change anything. If he wanted to make a difference, he had to act. He closed his eyes for a brief moment, remembering his father's words, imagining what his father would have done. His father would never have left someone in danger, no matter the risk. Determined, Suho turned back, eyes wide with fear but also resolve. The possessed hunter was already closing in on the girl, who was screaming, her hands shielding her face as if they could ward off the inevitable. She was alone, completely vulnerable. Without hesitation, Suho grabbed a fire extinguisher from the hallway, charging back into the fray. With a desperate swing, he struck the hunter, the impact enough to knock it back. He continued his frantic assault, using the extinguisher to keep the beast at bay, his heart racing with every blow. The hunter staggered, giving Suho enough time to grab the girl and pull her to safety. Breathing heavily, Suho looked down at her, relieved that he had acted in time. He realized in that moment that this was exactly what his father would have done, he wouldn't have run. He would have faced the danger, no matter how powerless he felt. As Suho helped the girl to her feet, a sudden notification flashed before his eyes. It was a message, something he hadn't seen before. You have completed the hidden quest, courage of the powerless. For a split second, Suho remembered a strange dream he once had, a dream so vivid it felt real. Now, in this moment, it seemed like more than just a dream, it felt like something greater was unfolding. In the midst of the chaos, Suho's mind wandered back to a strange dream he had once. In that dream, it felt as though he were in some kind of game where he wielded powerful gloves designed for combat, using them to fend off wave after wave of increasingly dangerous monsters. Every time the monsters grew stronger, Suho had to push himself to find new strategies, new methods of survival. He constantly leveled up, unlocking new skills as he fought, barely keeping the relentless creatures from overwhelming him. With every battle, he became more powerful. Soon, the monsters he faced were nothing short of terrifying, yet each victory fueled his growth. His skills sharpened, his strength increased, and with time, he reached the final level of this dreamlike game. It was there, standing at the threshold of the last challenge, that he encountered the ultimate foe, a towering monster of incredible power. Suho couldn't help but respect the immense strength of the creature, and for a fleeting moment, he even felt a pang of envy. But then, something unexpected happened. The formidable boss he was meant to defeat wasn't a faceless creature at all, it was his father. Staring at him, Suho realized he couldn't bring himself to fight. His father, strong and steadfast, was a figure he admired deeply. But why was he here, standing as the final challenge in this surreal nightmare? Was it just a reflection of his father's strength? Suho found himself paralyzed by the idea of fighting his own father, unsure if this was just a dream or a profound message about strength and sacrifice. As the memory of the dream washed over him, Suho found himself back in the present, holding the fire extinguisher tightly as he prepared to face the possessed hunter. The hunter's entire body blazed with blue flames, completely overtaken by the strange energy. The scene felt eerily similar to the final showdown in his dream. He could almost hear his father's voice in the back of his mind, urging him to act. What would dad do? Suho thought as he dashed forward. His heart pounded, and the fire extinguisher felt like his only lifeline. With no time to waste, Suho knew he had to face this monstrous hunter. The blue flames crackled around the hunter, giving off an unnatural heat that threatened to consume everything in its path. The hunter moved with menacing intent, but Suho couldn't allow himself to hesitate any longer. He launched himself at the hunter with everything he had. Chaos erupted around Suho as the hunter, engulfed in blue flames, went berserk. The infected hunter lashed out at anyone in his path, spreading the curse to others and transforming them into mindless, flame-possessed monsters. Desperation fueled Suho's actions as he swung the fire extinguisher with all his might, desperately trying to prevent the hunter from biting the other students. With every blow, he thought of his father, the man who would have sacrificed himself without hesitation to save an innocent life. In that moment, Suho resolved to do the same. He managed to hold the hunter at bay, giving the others a chance to escape. But deep down, he knew it wouldn't last. The situation was dire. Suho had no magical abilities and knew that as an unawakened person, he was virtually powerless against monsters like this. The reality of his own recklessness hit him hard, he'd charged in to save the girl without a plan, and now his life was hanging by a thread. There was no way he could defeat the hunter without magic, and yet here he was, facing down a monster far beyond his capabilities. Then something strange happened. 
The hunter, who had been advancing with terrifying force, suddenly stopped. It was as if he was suspended in midair, frozen in place. Suho blinked in confusion. He glanced around and realized that everything had stopped. The girl he had just saved stood motionless, and the air itself seemed frozen in time. Suho's heart raced as he tried to make sense of the bizarre scene. It was as if the world had come to a standstill. Amidst the confusion, a new notification appeared in front of him, a message that he had never seen before. Shock washed over him as he read the words, Secret quest completed, courage of the powerless. You have been offered the chance to become a player? Suho's mind raced. This was exactly like the dream he'd had, the one where he fought monsters and leveled up, becoming stronger with each battle. And just like in the dream, here was an opportunity to gain the power he never had. The power to fight back, to protect others. To become something more than just an ordinary person caught in a world filled with monsters. A smile crept onto Suho's face as he realized what this meant. The system was offering him a way out of his helplessness, a way to finally fight back. The choice was clear. Without hesitation, Suho accepted the offer to become a player. Suho's entire world shifted in that instant. The system congratulated him for becoming a player, signaling that his life would never be the same again. Though the future was uncertain, Suho felt ready to embrace it. As a reward for completing his first quest, the system gifted him a powerful spell from the mage Kandiaru. Along with the spell came a profound blessing, Suho was now immune to all illnesses, poisons, and harmful effects, and he would enjoy long life free from disease. However, the system warned him this was no longer a dream. He only had one life, and he needed to tread carefully. Curiosity flooded Suho as he examined his new stats, the window before him resembling the game-like interface from his recurring dreams. It filled him with a sense of familiarity, and surprisingly, he felt a thrill at the possibilities it offered. The system notified him of his next mission, he was tasked with destroying the mist burns and increasing his level. Mist burns were hunters infected by the mysterious blue flame, cursed after a failed attempt to close the gate. As Suho absorbed the notifications, time resumed its natural flow. He glanced at the girl, still frozen in fear, and urged her to run while she had the chance. Looking around, Suho noticed something new, names and titles floated above the heads of the infected hunters. All of them were now identified as mist burns, marked for him to eliminate. Most were ordinary people, cursed by the flame, but there were also a few who had been hunters before the infection took hold. Among them, Suho spotted two mist burns charging toward him, their eyes glowing with that same eerie blue flame. The surviving bystanders were fleeing, desperate to escape the chaos, but Suho remained calm. He had been awakened, and now wielded magical power capable of defeating these monsters. This was the moment to test that power. With determination, Suho gripped the fire extinguisher in his hands. As the first mist burn lunged at him, he swung the extinguisher with all his might. The impact sent the creature flying several meters back, crashing into the ground. Suho discarded the fire extinguisher, eager to test the raw strength of his own fists. He focused intensely, aiming straight for the monster's head, feeling a surge of anger and determination course through him. For the first time, he wasn't gripped by fear, only a desire to unleash his newfound power. With a loud shout, he threw his punch with everything he had, channeling all his strength into the blow. His power had multiplied several times over, and he could sense it. The impact was overwhelming. His punch sent the creature hurtling upward, smashing through the ceiling above them. Suho stood in shock, unable to fully grasp the immense strength he had just displayed. Only moments earlier, this monster could have killed him in a single strike, but now he had obliterated it with one blow. The system confirmed his success with a notification, he had defeated the mist burn unawakened. Staring down at his fist, Suho marveled at what he had just accomplished. As he processed this, another monster launched itself at him. However, Suho was faster now, his reflexes had sharpened. He effortlessly dodged the attack and retaliated, landing a powerful counterstrike that finished the creature instantly. The system chimed again, confirming that Suho had successfully defeated the second mist burn. With his mission complete, he leveled up. A sense of triumph washed over him. Suho was thrilled by his transformation, realizing that he now wielded abilities he had only dreamed of. The system rewarded him for completing his task, but Suho's excitement wasn't just about the notifications, he wanted to explore his powers further. Eager to test his new limits, Suho confronted another monster. This time, he struck with confidence, certain that his attack would be just as effective. But to his surprise, the creature absorbed the blow with barely a flinch. It didn't recoil in pain, and Suho quickly realized that this opponent was far stronger than the ones he had faced before. Suddenly, it dawned on him, his next battle would be much tougher than he anticipated. 
His earlier victories had been exhilarating, but they hadn't prepared him for what was coming. Suho understood that this fight would require more than brute strength. Suho quickly realized that his opponent was far stronger than he had anticipated. His initial surprise soon turned into anxiety as the monster's resilience forced him to rethink his approach. The creature wasted no time, launching a relentless series of attacks. Each blow was more powerful than the last, and Suho found himself struggling to keep up. He had to endure a barrage of force and fury just to survive, and now, figuring out how to defeat this seemingly invulnerable enemy became crucial. In one fierce strike, the misburned creature managed to severely wound Suho. A sharp pain shot through him, signaling just how much danger he was in. The situation had grown dire, if he didn't come up with a new strategy soon, he wouldn't last much longer. Gritting his teeth, Suho gathered all his strength and kicked the monster, creating just enough distance between them for him to jump back to safety. As he staggered to a safer position, he took a moment to catch his breath and assess the situation. His body was heavily injured, and he feared that these wounds could cause him to transform into one of the demonic creatures himself. The thought terrified him, he had only just awakened, and now he faced the grim possibility of turning into the very thing he was fighting. Then, the system notification broke through his thoughts. It warned him that his life was in serious danger and that the long life without sickness ability had been activated. Suho had almost forgotten about this reward, one he had received for slaying monsters earlier. Now, it was his lifeline. He wasn't sure exactly how the skill worked, but he hoped it could give him the edge he desperately needed. Suddenly, the monster lunged at him again, knocking him to the ground with immense force. Suho struggled under its crushing weight as it tried to tear him apart. The creature's strength was overwhelming, and Suho could barely fend off its attack. He realized, with a bitter clarity, that he was still too weak compared to even a deranked demonic beast. That meant he was likely ranked as an E, which explained why he was struggling so much. Despite this grim realization, Suho was determined to fight back. His awakened power might not be fully developed, but he refused to give up. He did everything he could to keep the monster at bay, grappling with it to stop its fangs from reaching him. Each second was a battle for survival, but deep down, Suho knew he had to find a way to turn the tide before it was too late. Suho had no clear strategy for defeating the monster, but he refused to surrender. He knew that every move he made could decide his fate in this life-or-death struggle. Just as the situation grew more desperate, a system notification flashed before him. He had received a reward, additional skill points and a boost to his strength. This unexpected surge of power renewed his hope, giving him the edge he needed in the fight. Feeling the newfound strength coursing through him, Suho struck the monster with all his might, managing to break free from its crushing grip. With a powerful shove, he hurled the beast across the room, sending it crashing to the ground. He knew he had to act fast. The monster wouldn't stay down for long, and Suho needed to finish it off before it could recover. True to his expectations, the creature quickly regained its footing, and their brutal battle resumed. Suho realized he had to defeat it quickly, or he might not survive another round of attacks. With a deep breath, he launched a devastating strike, hitting the monster so hard that it reeled from the impact, visibly stunned. Sensing an opportunity, Suho pressed on, refusing to let up as he pummeled the creature with everything he had. Despite the relentless barrage, the monster stubbornly endured each blow. To Suho's disbelief, it still fought back with a fury that seemed unshakable. He was beginning to doubt whether he could actually overpower this beast, even with his enhanced abilities. That's when a thought struck him, he hadn't fully utilized his skill points yet. Without hesitation, Suho invested all the points into increasing his strength, hoping it would be enough to turn the tide. As his power surged once more, Suho felt a sense of confidence. He prepared himself for the final showdown, knowing that this boost might be the key to defeating his formidable opponent. The creature charged at him again, but this time Suho was ready. He dodged the attack with newfound agility, countering with a heavy strike that shook the ground. He had never heard of an awakened being able to increase their strength and leveling up, and it defied everything he knew about ranks. But rank didn't matter now, survival did. Suho put everything into his next move, determined to end the battle once and for all. He may not have understood all the mysteries of the system, but he wasn't about to let that stop him. All that mattered was bringing down the monster before it had a chance to inflict a fatal blow. Suho faced the monstrous threat before him, determined to end it once and for all. As he stood there, he realized something important, he was no longer bound by the unfair limitations of the system. He felt a surge of new power coursing through him, giving him the strength to break free from the constraints that once held him back. His next punch was devastating, sending the creature hurtling across the room until it crashed into the far wall. Without hesitation, Suho charged at the down monster, knowing he couldn't afford to give it a moment's respite. 
His blows were fiercer, faster, and more powerful than before. There was no stopping him now. The beast, overwhelmed, had no chance to fight back as Suho unleashed a relentless assault. Each strike landed with brutal precision, and the creature could only absorb the punishment. Suho's determination fueled him through the fatigue, his focus locked on one goal, to destroy the monster. After what felt like an eternity of relentless blows, Suho delivered a final, crushing strike, hoping it was enough to end the battle. Panting heavily, his body screamed in exhaustion, but he knew he had to confirm the monster's defeat. As he approached its motionless form, the system chimed in with a notification, he had defeated the creature. Relief washed over him as he realized he had leveled up, gaining not just strength but also new abilities that bolstered his confidence. Finally allowing himself to rest, Suho sank to the ground, catching his breath as the weight of the battle settled in. He glanced down at his hand, noticing the blood staining his knuckles. Clenching his fist, he felt an overwhelming sense of pride. He had awakened. He was no longer the powerless, insignificant person he once thought he was. This was just the beginning. Suho knew that his future had changed forever. No longer feeling like an ant in a world full of predators, he was filled with newfound confidence. Now that he had become an awakened player, he believed he could protect others and confront the chaos spreading throughout his world. With this power, he was certain that he would succeed in the challenges ahead. 